This video will demonstrate the steps that a retinal surgeon or other healthcare professional should follow in order to administer Visudyne therapy. The first step is to obtain consent from the patient for Visudyne therapy. Ensure that the patient has a viable vein for the Visudyne infusion. Then, review the list of recommended materials you will need, which are described in the recommended Visudyne preparation guide. While preparing Visudyne, be sure to avoid skin and eye contact to prevent potential photosensitivity reactions from light exposure. And remember, any person treated with Visudyne must be protected from bright light. To begin, use a standard syringe and needle to withdraw 7 milliliters of sterile water for injection. Inject the sterile water into a vial of Visudyne powder. The vial should be agitated gently until the contents are fully reconstituted to make a 2 mg per milliliter solution. Now set the vial aside with the needle still attached. Next, using a standard BSA nomogram or the standard formula for BSA, calculate the patient's BSA to determine the appropriate volume of reconstituted Visudyne solution that you will need to achieve the desired dose of 6 mg per meter squared of BSA. Subtract that volume from the total 30 milliliter infusion volume to determine the volume of D5W needed. Once you've determined the proper volume, withdraw the appropriate amount of D5W into a 30 milliliter syringe, leaving the needle attached. For this and all dilution metrics, it is important to follow the calculated BSA results. Now withdraw the appropriate amount of Visudyne for your patient's infusion and set it aside. Carefully remove the needle from the 30 milliliter syringe and add the Visudyne solution to the D5W. The total volume will now be 30 milliliters of properly diluted Visudyne and D5W inside the 30 milliliter syringe. Do not use normal saline or other parenteral solutions other than D5W, and do not mix in other drugs. Inspect the Visudyne for particulate matter and discoloration. Reconstituted Visudyne must be protected from light and used within four hours. Conduct the infusion preparation according to standard practice using a 1.2 micron sterile filter. The following procedure is a recommended approach. Withdraw 5 milliliters of D5W into each of two 10 to 20 milliliter syringes and set them aside. One will be used to check for blood return and patency before infusion. The other will be used to flush the remaining Visudyne at the end of the infusion process. Attach the 1.2 micron sterile filter to the 30 milliliter syringe and then attach the IV extension set to the open side of the filter. Depress the plunger of the syringe in order to prime the tubing with Visudyne. After the line is completely filled, clamp the tubing. Now place a catheter into a vein in the patient's arm. It is strongly recommended that the largest arm vein possible preferably the antecubital, be used for injection. Next, remove the catheter needle and check for blood return with one of the two syringes containing 5 milliliters of D5W. If blood is present in the line, flush the line with the remaining D5W to check for patency. Secure the IV system with tape. To start the Visudyne infusion, connect the catheter line to the IV extension set and load the 30 milliliter syringe containing the mixture of Visudyne and D5W into the infusion pump. Set the infusion pump for 10 minutes, running at a rate of 3 milliliters per minute. Now unclamp the tubing, start the pump, and begin the Visudyne infusion. Then set a separate timer for 15 minutes. This timer is used to indicate the start of the laser treatment, which begins at the end of the 15-minute time period. After 10 minutes, 
The Visidine infusion will be complete and the pump should be turned off. Laser treatment preparation begins with the insertion of the remaining syringe containing 5 milliliters of D5W into the side port at the top of the IV extension line. Slowly flush the IV system manually for approximately 60 seconds, allowing the remaining Visudine solution to be delivered through the vein. Take precautions to prevent extravasation at the injection site. If extravasation does occur, immediately protect the injection site from light. 15 minutes after the infusion started, the timer will chime an alert. Administer anesthetic eye drops to the affected eye prior to administering the photodynamic therapy. At this time, the laser treatment can begin. Adjust the settings of the laser and place a focusing lens on the patient's eye. Photoactivation of Visudine is controlled by the total light dose delivered. The recommended light dose is 50 joules per square centimeter of neovascular lesion. The dose is administered at an intensity of 600 milliwatts per square centimeter, delivered over 83 seconds. With the laser, deliver the light to the patient's affected retina as a single circular spot through a fiber optic guide and a slit lamp. Use a suitable ophthalmic magnification lens to cover the lesion, leaving a 500 micron border that is at least 200 microns from the temporal edge of the optic disc. After completing Visudine photodynamic therapy, provide the patient with a light sensitivity warning bracelet and printed instructions regarding the safety precautions that should be observed for the next five days. The most important point is the avoidance of bright indoor light and sunlight. After completing photodynamic therapy with Visudine, the patient should be evaluated every three months. If choroidal neovascular leakage is detected in fluorescein angiography, Visudine therapy should be repeated. Consult the Visudine full prescribing information for information about laser systems that have been tested for compatibility with Visudine and are approved for delivery of a stable power output at the required wavelength.